controversy over the stars and stripes. Statesville, North Carolina, suing the RV retailer Gander RV over what it calls a gigantic American flag. <laughs> Officials saying the flag violates a city ordinance limiting a flag's size and height. Marcus Limonis, the chairman and CEO of Camping World Gander's parent company, is not giving in. He's right in front of us now. He joins us. Marcus, thank you very much for taking the time out. You are, uh, you're being fined, what, 50 bucks a day? And retroactively, you owe, what, $10,000? That's just maybe up until this point. So, you know, there are some rules. So let's throw those rules out the window. How far are you willing to take this? Well, we're not going to throw the rules out the window. But for me, rules are meant to really... <clears throat> enforce uh, uh, people to not, you know, hurt people or to, to break real laws. In this particular case, I'm going to take it as far as I have to. We have flown this flag for a long time. We didn't ask for this lawsuit. Uh, we fly this size pole and this size flag in over 180 cities across the country. It's been something that's been part of my DNA since I was a kid. And as I've told the city, uh, when they filed the lawsuit and they're seeking the motion for injunction, it's not coming down under any circumstance. Uh, Marcus, this is uh, Gary Culp. I'm first off, if I was able to get rid of these wires and this mic right now, I'd be giving you a standing ovation uh, for standing up uh, for our great American flag. So uh, congratulations. Uh, you know, I looked at the picture and all we see is this majestic flag uh, waving in the wind. I went to your website. I signed the petition also. Uh, my question is, have you been able to meet with any of these people that are making these decisions? to describe to them why you are flying this flag, what it represents, what is it about? Have, have you met with them? Have you been able to embarrass them into thinking a little bit differently? No, because I think at the end of the day, right, we, we know that, that before the flagpole goes up and before the flag goes up, we want to ensure that people are safe. We're not messing with the FAA in terms of air traffic rules. And from what I understand, there are eight members of this city council uh, four are brand new, four are historical, and uh, the last I understood that it was a five to three vote against increasing the size of the flag ordinance. It's odd to me that you would approve a 130-foot flagpole and then ask us to fly a <laughs> postage stamp on it. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to us. And so, look, it, we, we don't, I don't normally uh, advocate for, for, you know, violating ordinances and things of that nature. But we have 14,000 employees and, uh, you know, several million customers. And I have a fiduciary responsibility to follow their, their edict as well. And everybody's saying, we're not taking this flag down. Marcus, if you go to jail, we'll visit you. But we're not taking the flag down. <laughs> Marcus, uh, John Layfield here. It is wonderful to have you on the show, sir. I applaud you for what you're doing. I love your story. Uh, that's why I hate that you're on a network sometimes that uh, has the visibility of a witness protection program. So I'm glad you're over here on the number one business show in the world. This is where you belong, sir. Uh, and so I want to ask you, though, are you willing to go to jail? Because there's an injunction that if it's passed by a judge, you could end up in contempt of court. Are you willing to go that far, sir? And welcome to Bulls and Bears. So what yeah, thank you, guys. So, what, so what's, been at, what's been told to me is the way this process works, city files a lawsuit. Uh, uh, they're seeking the injunction. The fine, as I've told everybody, make it 50, make it 500, make it 5,000. This is not about dollars and cents. This is about doing what's right. If you told me that my sign, the name of my business, had to come off my building in exchange for the flag staying, I'd say, fine, I'll take the name of my business off the building. Uh, what I've been told is that if the injunction is granted by the court, uh, that I will be instructed to take the flag down. I have been very transparent from the beginning that I will not do that. I've been notified by several people that that would result in me being in contempt of court, which would be unfortunate. I would never want to break the law or, 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 or you know, be in contempt of any court of any kind. But in this particular situation, I understand that if I don't comply with that order, that, uh, that I, I could and would be arrested uh, and, and put in jail until the flag came down. Marcus, it's Jonathan Honig. Thank you for being with us. I have to ask, the stock of your company is down by about 75% in just the last two years. Who is paying this fine? And don't you think that this is a potential legal liability that, for example, you're going to have to disclose in those quarterly reports when it comes to the price action in your publicly traded company? Look, my publicly traded company, Camping World, is doing just fine, and I, I can't really comment on why the stock price is what it is. As you guys know, I own over 36 million shares. Is the company um, paying the fine, so or are you paying the fine, sir? 
I, I'm, I'm willing to pay it. The company actually doesn't even employ me. I'm not a, I'm not, I don't receive a paycheck for running the business. Okay. And so if the company or the board of directors asked me to pay that fine myself, of course I would do that. In this particular case, I think the board of directors and the company would like to pay the fine themselves uh, because they believe that this is a stance of our company, not just a Marcus stance. Uh, Marcus, uh, generally speaking, a, a lawsuit like this is not filed unless there's a group of people pushing a town to do it. And it looks to me like this flag is flying pretty much in the n middle of nowhere. Who is it that's so offended by this? I don't know. I mean, I, it, it is, it is uh, somewhat in the middle of nowhere, and it's far removed from the freeway. What I ultimately think has happened is, understandably so, you have some city council folks that, uh, that want us to comply with their laws in that town. Here's what's ironic. We're in a county um, where we have another store about seven miles away in a town called Mooresville, uh, which is in the same county as Statesville, which is the, the town that is suing us. And the same exact flag with the same exact size is flying in Mooresville, and that county and that particular town has no issue with it. We have 13 other stores in the state of North Carolina that also fly this same flag. And so it isn't a North Carolina, South Carolina thing. It unfortunately is in this particular town with city officials who believe that their particular ordinance is appropriate. I have one question for the panel. Uh, when is it time for the federal government to, to, to create a law that says, look, as long as people are safe, as long as the FAA isn't in trouble, there should be no restriction of size of the flag. In fact, it cost us $100,000 to put this up. And I don't ever want to be an obstinate person, but I always would love to have the largest pole and the largest flag in the state. And so if it means that we'll spend a million dollars to do it, that, that's fine. Hey, but Marcus, if it, you're asking us I, I about the, 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 uh, the federal government and what we think of them right now, we'd be here for about three <laughs> hours. So I think we better uh, hold off on that. May yeah, I, though, Marcus? Probably. Marcus, if you, it can be interpreted whatever way going forward. Another company could do the same and put a flag up, and maybe not of the American flag, but a flag of maybe somebody's face or their own home country or whatever. So what right does it, do they have? If you can go ahead with a large flag, why can't they? Because I don't consider a logo or a brand of a company or somebody's face or something that we all know isn't appropriate uh, to be deemed in the same category, right? The flag isn't a sign. I don't own the logo. It belongs to this country, the men and women that fought for us. It belongs to them. If you put a flag of somebody's face or of their company logo, then it, does, in my opinion, falls under the sign ordinance. If anybody wants to debate with me whether the flag is a sign or not, I'd be glad to spend as much time or money doing that. This flag does not belong to me. It does not belong to the city of Statesville. It belongs to the men and women that gave me the ability to enter this country as an immigrant, have a business, have a job, and I'm not budging. Maybe you should just move out of that town into one that's a little bit more friendly for our flag. No, that would be I'll giving it up. I'll, I'll tell you, no, I'll tell you why I won't do that. Because, yeah, 14 years ago, we moved into this town. It was the first business I had in North Carolina. We love our residents. We love the employees there. They don't want to pick up and move and change their commute because a few city officials don't like the size of the flag. So I'm not just going to take the approach, well, I'm going to lock my business up and move it. I'm not moving. My business is doing just fine there. Okay, Marcus Lamonis, thank you very much for joining us on Fox Business and fight the fight. You can do it. You got it. You got it. Thank, thank you. you, guys. Thank you.